good day to D. Today's topic, solving systems, and today's goal, I know what inconsistent and dependent systems are and how to spot them when solving systems. So we're carrying on with solving by substitution, uh, but notice the little by, uh, the subtitle there that says, when things get weird. So let's try to graph the following systems on a graphing calculator and see if we can do anything with them by graphing. So let's have a look. If I turn the calculator, calculator on to start with and go into y equals whoop let's clear the calculator second plus seven one two and go back in there all right now it says that y1 equals and we're going to type in two thirds so two divided by three x plus three and then the next one is going to be four divided by six x minus two so let's graph that and have a look. A graph. There we go. Okay, there's our first line. And there's our second line. And they're not crossing. They're not crossing at all. I wonder if we can change the window settings. Let's say if I go from um, negative 20 to positive 20. And go from negative 20 to positive 20 and see if I can find them crossing now. Let's take a look. Let's graph it again. And there's our first line. And there's our second line and they're still not crossing. Uh, in fact, they look pretty parallel and parallel lines are never going to cross. So that means I'm never going to be able to find a solution for the system. Um, and if we took a look at it, uh, if you were sharp-eyed before, you would see that this 4 over 6 actually reduces to 2 thirds, which means that these two lines have exactly the same slope, and two lines that have the same slope are parallel. So these two lines have the same slopes. They are parallel. which means that there are no solutions. So this system is said to be inconsistent. So this is an inconsistent system. It happens when lines are parallel and you're never gonna get a solution. Now, how about this next one? Let's pull up my graphing calculator again. Uh, y equals 1 fifth, 1 divided by 5x plus 4 divided by 3. Kind of a nasty y-intercept, but that's all right. And 2 divided by 10x plus 8 divided by 6. And let's graph it. So there's our first line. And our second. There is no second line. What's happening with our second line? Um, if you have a quick look at that, you'll see that this set of lines actually, if you reduce this to lowest terms, it's one fifth, so it means it has the same slope. Uh, and if you reduce this one, it reduces to four thirds, which means it has exactly the same y intercept. So that is the same line. So both of those equations are the same line. Um, that means that they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. And since they're exactly the same line, one just graphed over top of the other, so there is actually an infinite number of solutions. This one is said to be a dependent system. Okay, now how about if you didn't notice that and you tried to solve through substitution, where on earth would you finally realize that you either had no solutions or infinitely many solutions? Uh, so here's what we're going to figure out. Uh, this line um, is going to give us a funny answer. This system is going to give us a funny answer, but we're going to start solving by substitution the way we uh, did in the last video. So I'm going to take equation number two. And I'm going to rearrange equation number two to get either x or y by itself. It doesn't really matter, so let's get y by itself. I'm going to subtract x from both sides, so I get 6 minus x. And that is our equation 3. Now I'm going to sub 3 
into the equation I did not use in the first place, which is equation number one. So now I write down 2x plus 2y, but instead of y, I'm going to write 6 minus x because equation 3 tells us that that's what y is. And that's going to equal 7. So that gives me 2x plus 12 minus 2x equals 7. So the 2's, 2 and negative 2 cancel, so I'm left with 12 equals 7. Okay, something went wrong here. 12 doesn't equal 7, at least not on this planet, not in this universe. So this is never true. So if you get something, if you come down to a question like this that is absolutely not true, um, we say it's never true. Uh, these lines never cross. That means there are no solutions. And it's an inconsistent system. Inconsistent system. Okay, so I'm going to go back up and I'm going to fill that into this line here and say this is when we have inconsistent systems. And you do need to know this terminology, so make sure you understand it. Okay, now we're going to do another example. And we're going to start solving by solving by substitution again. Sorry about that last slide. Um, so we've got something funny here. Um, it looks like it might be funny because things are rearranged. Um, but we're going to start solving by substitution. So I need to take equation number 1, which is 2x minus y minus 3 equals 0. And I'm going to get y all by itself. So the easiest way to do that is if I add y to both sides. When I add y to both sides, I get 2x minus 3 equals y. And that's going to be my equation 3. And now I'm going to sub my equation 3. We're going to sub equation 3 into the equation I didn't use in the first place, which was equation 2. So if I sub equation 3 into 2, I've got 3y, but y I know is 2x minus 3. Uh, then I'm going to add 9, and that's going to equal 6x. So now I just have to expand, simplify, keep going. So that's 6x minus 9 uh, plus 9 equals 6x. And now my 9's cancel, so this tells me 6x equals 6x. If I want to get all my x's to one side, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. And if I subtract 6x from both sides, I get 0 equals 0. And while it may be true that 0 equals 0, that doesn't go any, that doesn't tell me what x and y equal. Um, so something funny has happened here. This is, in fact, always true. And if I had stopped at 6x equals 6x, that's funny enough as it is. Um, that's always true as well. Uh, so if you get something that is always true, the lines always cross. Which means we have infinite solutions. And if we have infinite solutions, that means that it is a dependent system. So we'll just put that title up there, and that's our dependent systems. Now, example three uh, is just when things don't work out quite so nicely. Uh, example three is going to be an example where we actually get uh, fractional answers, which isn't a big deal. Um, you just need to know how to deal with fractions. So we're going to go through this example where our answers aren't going to be quite so nice. And we're going to go by substitution again. So we'll start by substitution. So I notice that I have a y there that doesn't have a coefficient. So I say I'm going to take equation 2, and I'm going to rearrange it to get y by itself. 4x plus y equals 11. And now I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides to get y equals 11 minus 4x. And we're going to call this our equation 3. Now let's sub 3 into the equation I have not used yet. 
So I used two, so I have to go into one. So we're going to sub three into equation one. And I solve for y, so it's y that I'm going to sub into. So equation one is 5x minus 3y, but y is 11 minus 4x from here. And then it equals 2. So 5x minus 33, I have to multiply this 3 through the brackets, uh, plus 12x is going to equal 2. Then I'm going to put my x's together, so I have 17x minus 33 equals 2. Add 33 to both sides, 17x equals 35. And divide both sides by 17, I get x equals 35 over 17. Now that doesn't go equally, um, so I'm quite happy if you leave it as an improper fraction as long as you reduce to lowest terms. And in this case, 17 is a prime number, so nothing goes into both 35 and 17. Now we just have to take our answer and we say sub x in, well the easiest place to put it back into is equation number 3 because I already have y solved for. So we're going to sub x into 3 and we get y equals 11 minus 4 times 35 over 17. Now you have to remember how to work with fractions. If I want to give 11 a denominator of 17, it has a denominator of 1 right now, so I need to do 11 times 17, which is 187. And now I need to subtract, and I have to multiply 4 times 35 to get my numerator, 140 over 17. Well, 187 minus 140 is 47 over 17. And so there is our answer. And if we were to graph those uh, graph those two lines, they would cross at 35 over 17 and 47 over 17. So therefore, the solution is 35 over 17 for our x, comma, 47 over 17 for our y. And that actually concludes the lesson for today. Give a few more of these a try and see if you come across any that are fractional, inconsistent, which means there is no answer, or uh, dependent, which means there's an infinite number of answers.